We are standing here in the Cape Town offices of Strauss & Company with this amazing selection of silver that is forthcoming on our auction. Supporting all of the silver though, we have an amazing George III silver table. And what is so interesting about these tables is that they came into being for a very specific reason, namely to have the silver laid out at the, in the household and that could then be distributed to the various areas where it was needed, so the dining room or the morning room or the tea room, etc. Traditionally, the sideboard began as this instrument where all the silver could be laid out. And as the households in those days were quite vast, if you think back to the 15th century, 14th century, and then coming right through into the 18th, 19th centuries, these objects had to travel quite a long way between different passages and rooms. In the Georgian era, we see these tables come into being, and they are lovely from the point of view as well, that they have this beautiful gallery, in this case it's pierced, and that supported or stopped the silver from actually coming off the table, so when it was laid down, you were quite sure that it would stay where it, you had positioned it. When we look to the actual silver that is on the forthcoming February online auction, I'm just going to quickly point out this little lot over here, which is a Dutch teapot, a Dutch two-handled sugar bowl and cover, and then a French milk jug. And why I'm pointing it out is because it is so interesting from an educational point of view. Whilst the decoration, when you seemingly look at it for the first time and glance over it, appears to be all the same, there are actually subtle differences. And this is what we look for within the department when we are taking in silver for consignment, as well as, of course, when we are cataloging it. So you have, for example, here the leaf cap on the handle which is replicated here but when we look over here we have on the milk jug a very restrained um, molded leaf which does not rise up as you can see on the other two examples where your thumb would easily rest and help and assist you in, in carrying the piece similarly if you look at the decoration to the body although it does appear to be the same it, there are subtle differences especially when we look to the feet where we have beaded borders on two examples and the other example differs slightly and then of course, if you then look to the mark, then you discover that these two examples are the Dutch, this is the French, and interesting, this teapot comes with a little tea strainer, which can be removed, and as Vanessa has explained to myself, often were lost. So Vanessa, over to you. Yeah, Sophie Louise, I think it was quite fun doing the research for that particular service. We have lots of tea services on this uh, auction, and. This is a little tiny morning tea service or what we call a bachelor's tea service. It's English, it's from Sheffield, end of the 19th century, very popular. It's what a bachelor would have in your early morning tea and we, have, we see many of these uh, examples. On the sale we also have a fantastic cross section of flatware from George III to Jörg Jensen, Tiffany and finally to Kurt Jobst who is a German working in South Africa in the mid-20th century. I think what Sophie Louise and I had such fun with was this particular object, which was a bit of a mystery to both of us until she found out exactly what it was. So it's a child's feeding tube, but it could also be used for invalids. <laughs> yeah. It's Irish and is dated uh, 1874, and it fitted onto the cup, cup like that, and you fill that up with the food and that you were able to suck on that. We also have a very attractive collection from a single owner of 19th century, basically Victorian, scent bottles, double-ended, um, a beautiful lemon yellow example, and it's one single owner collection. So we are really fortunate to be able to showcase this lot with you. And if you do find any of this fascinating and interesting as we do, please have a look on our website www.strassart.co.za.